So, if we take this primary hyperlipoproteinemias, primary hyperlipoproteinemias, either they are familial in origin or they are genetic. Now, we have various types of hyperlipoproteinemias, right? So, there are types like type 1, type 2A, and then we have type 2B, then we have type 3, type 4 and type 5 hyperlipoproteinemias. Now, first you take type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia. In case of type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia, the lipoprotein which is increased is the chylomicrons. The chylomicrons are increased in type 1 type of primary hyperlipoproteinemia. Now, you take this chylomicron which is the lipoprotein increased in type 1. What did we discuss? We have discussed that chylomicron contain excess amount of triglycerides rather than the cholesterol. So, you take the lipids which are elevated. The lipids elevated are triglycerides, they are very much increased compared to that of the cholesterols. Cholesterol content in type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia is normal whereas triglyceride content is very much increased. Now, what is the risk of atherosclerosis? In type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia, there is no risk of atherosclerosis. Now, when there is no risk of atherosclerosis, we don't require to treat the patient. So, the treatment, the type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia does not require any treatment. Alright, next. You take type 2A. In case of type 2A hyperlipoproteinemia, the type of lipoprotein which is increased is the LDL lipoprotein that is low density lipoprotein. Now what did we discuss? We have discussed that low density lipoprotein will not have any effect on the triglycerides. Low density lipoprotein mainly transports the cholesterol esters. So that is the reason why you take the lipids which are elevated in type 2A. The lipids which are elevated in type 2A is the cholesterol esters, they are elevated whereas the triglycerides, they are normal. Now, because the cholesterol esters are increased, there is very much high risk of the atherosclerosis. Right? There is very much high risk of atherosclerosis. Now, in order to reduce that cholesterol, whichever has been increased in type 2a hyperlipoproteinemia the treatment which is required is statins the treatment which is required is statins all right next coming to type 2b type of hyperlipoproteinemia so if you take type 2b the lipoproteins whichever are increased is one is vldl that is very low density lipoproteins and as well as LDL. Alright. So, in case of type 2B, the lipoproteins which are increased is VLDL and as well as LDL lipoprotein. Now, so VLDL is required for is required for the transportation of the chylomicrons, whereas LDL is required for the transportation of the cholesterol. So, if you take the lipids which are elevated, both triglycerides and cholesterol, both of them they are increased in type 2b. Now, because triglycerides are also increased, because cholesterols are also increased, there is risk of atherosclerosis. Right? There is risk of atherosclerosis. Now, because there is risk of atherosclerosis due to increase in cholesterol and as well as triglycerides, the treatment what is required in case of type 2b is statins are required for reducing the cholesterol fibrates are required for reducing the triglycerides and not only that even nicotinic is acid is also required in the treatment of type 2b hyperlipoproteinemia all right now coming to type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia in case of type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia the lipoprotein which is increased is the intermediate density lipid and as well as the chylomicrons so, accordingly, if you take the lipids which are increased, so from the intermediate density lipid, we get the LDL, 
LDL will increase the cholesterol. From chylomicrons, the triglycerides are being transported. So, the triglycerides are increased. So, in case of type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia, both triglycerides and cholesterols are increased. So, that is the reason why, alright, that is the reason why there is risk of atherosclerosis. And the treatment what we give in case of type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia is we give phenofibrates. We give phenofibrates. Alright. Next, you take type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia. In type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia, the lipoprotein which is increased is VLDL. That is very low density lipid. Now, what does this VLDL do? VLDL, it will mainly transports the triglycerides. So, the lipids which are elevated in case of type 4 is mainly the triglycerides whereas the cholesterol content will be normal. So, in case of the type 4 there is risk of atherosclerosis and for the treatment of that particular risk of atherosclerosis we have to give phenofibrates and as well as nicotinic acid. Alright, next coming to the last one that is type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia. In case of type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia, the lipoproteins which are increased is the VLDL and as well as the chylomicrons. Right? VLDL and as well as the chylomicrons. Alright? So, accordingly, you take the lipids which are elevated. Alright? Accordingly, the lipids which are elevated is mainly the triglycerides. So, in type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia, the triglycerides are increased, whereas the cholesterol content will be normal. And in type 5, there is no risk of atherosclerosis. So, when there is no risk of atherosclerosis, type 5 hyperlipoproteinemia does not require any treatment. Does not require any treatment. So, that is about your primary hyperlipoproteinemias, which are either familial or genetic in origin.